This is a Lego. No, this is a Lego. But this is like a giant steel modular construction Lego. Stack them together in a couple of weeks, boom, you got a building. Then, just like a Lego, you can take them apart whenever you want and reassemble them. Why do this? Well, think about the mall. All of those shopping oases that got built in the 70s, 80s, and 90s? All of that concrete and rebar? Well, the internet made a bunch of malls obsolete. <laughs> and what do you do with the malls then? Some unideal conversion or demolition? Now extrapolate that to a world with millions of structures rendered obsolete every year. Annually, about two billion tons of waste is generated by destroying buildings. Enter modular construction. In the modular world, we think the holy grail is a red six Lego. You can build anything out of a red six. So we created what we think is a red six. This building has been assembled and disassembled nine times in seven years. Nine times? Nine times. Let's pause on that. That means they put the building together, people used it, then they took it apart, loaded it on trucks, moved it to a different place, and then assembled it again. Then they did that again eight more times in seven years. All of this raises the question, do buildings need to be permanent? Do cities need to be inert? This is Hard Reset, a series about rebuilding our world from scratch. Just north of San Francisco is a place called Mare Island, where they used to make submarines for the US Navy. We went out to this island to visit the folks at IMOD, one of the companies working to make modular construction mainstream. This is Reed. He's a general contractor by trade, so he spent most of his career making custom buildings. Now he's all in on modular. This frame is his baby. Well, not his actual baby. Reed has human children. We make one frame, that's it. There's not two or three different versions of our iMod frame, there's only one. You could have frames that stack side to side, end to end, top to bottom, and from that we can build multiple, multiple different projects. That's a big deal, because the modular and prefab movement has been underwhelming. Few are prepared to commit themselves to such a newfangled idea as the prefab. Historically, the emphasis has been on custom structures. We're not going to build a round one, we're not going to build a square one. It's this shape and you stick with that because you can't be everything to everybody. What makes this frame so special? Well, it's all pretty hidden. Our roof system has inbuilt gutters, which allow, obviously, the water to shed away from the building. That's Mike. He used to oversee an assembly line for Rolls-Royce airplane engines. That's pretty cool. Our frames are manufactured in Mexico or China. Then they come in as a bare frame, and we start putting in the air conditioning system, air conditioning ducting, putting in the wall system, the window system, and then the HVA system. All that HVA system sits in one module. The equipment's in there, the ductwork's in there, the return air's in there. It all allows for us to be faster and quicker on the job site when we get out to install our buildings. And that frame has connections all over it, so you can transport them on a truck or a ship, offload them with a simple crane at the construction site, stick a few of them together, add in the walls, hook in the plumbing and the electrical, bam, you're done. iMod is focused on building classrooms right now, because apparently children need to learn somewhere that's not a Zoom conference. When we went out to see them put the final touches on this school, we never would have guessed that it was modular prefab. Typically, it would take nine to 15 months to manufacture a classroom out in the field. We're doing that in 12 days. Yes, you heard that right. An entire classroom in 12 days from these simple frames. But wait a minute, I know what you're thinking. Didn't a company in China just build a 57-story prefab skyscraper in like 19 days? They sure did, and that's super cool. But a lot of those buildings are sitting empty. Then what? What I think is cool about this approach to modular construction is the ease with which they can disassemble and move these frames around. Action. Okay, we're just gonna walk, so follow me. Our six new classrooms are on the left side. Site-built products. And that flexibility the right was the idea from the start. 
You see, a decade ago, iMod's co-founder Craig spoke with an official from the Los Angeles School District who said, It's crazy. We have all these classrooms that we built deployed over here. And because of demographic changes in the last 20 years, we don't need them there anymore. We need them here. But we can't relocate them. Your building is relocatable. That would be a tremendous asset to us. In 20 years from now, guess what? They don't need classrooms anymore, but they need medical office buildings. These can turn into medical office buildings just by swapping out components and not having to go through a whole construction phase. We don't want our buildings to ever end up in a landfill, ever. We want to take that system and use it again and again and again and again. So what does a city look like when a bunch of its buildings can move? Picture this scenario. A giant company comes in, needs lots of places to put people. Lots of iMod frames come in. An office park emerges. In a few months, a neighborhood grows around it. But a decade later, that giant company leaves, and the people move to different parts of the city, or different cities altogether. Those offices in that neighborhood can scale down without leaving urban blight and unused space. But what if we think about this modularity on a global level? We developed this system in conjunction with Maersk, the big shipping company. Every one of our frames is shaped exactly like a container, and that way they can go on to a ship and transport just like a container on a ship. They can go on a train and transport just like a container does on a train. Pretty much every country in the world and every city in the world can handle a container. They know how to do it. What if, as the needs of countries change, Entire buildings, even entire cities, could be dispersed elsewhere. This would be a hard reset for how we think about the built environment. We would have to shift our mentality around the notion of constant growth. We see cities like Detroit, that went from 2 million people in the 50s to just under a million people now, and people think of them as a failure. But why? Cities are inherently dynamic, and maybe they should be able to change in size. Today, those size changes haven't been a good look because of the hollowed out warehouses and homes that are left behind. But what if we could shift those structures to other parts of the city or other parts of the world? We might lose the character that comes from old structures evolving over time. But not every building needs to be charming. Some things are more about utility. Some things work better as Legos. Come back next time for another episode of Hard Reset. Subscribe to Freethink to watch our other original series and documentaries about technology and people that are changing our world.